Hello, this is the exam three review for fall 2018. So this is going to be the, uh, the free answer part. For that. So um, there are going to be eight or nine multiple choice questions on the exam. These are going to cover things like chair flips, axial tutorial, um, understanding the difference between, you know, identify an antivirus and diastereomers and things like that. So, uh, but this is going to be free answer. So first up, Figuring out trans on a cyclooctane or cyclooctane. So for cis, remember it's all about um, if the groups are pointing up or down. Okay? So for cis, right, they're either going to be both pointing up or both pointing down. Okay? Uh, for trans, right, you're going to have one pointing up and one pointing down. Okay? So for this one here, right, so in a five-membered ring, so they're going to be um, they're both pointing below the ring, right? So they're both down. So this one would be six. For this one, right? So here's your the, right, the, for this carbon, right? So the carbon-carbon bonds are are uh, pointing down, so that means the axial is down, which means there's an equatorial that's coming out here. So, so hydrogen, right? Because there's only three bonds shown, right? So there has to be a hydrogen. So the hydrogen is above this methyl, right? So this is the up and this is the down. Same thing going with this one. If you've got the uh, groups, the carbon-carbon bonds are pointing up, so that means the axial has to be pointing straight up. So that means the equatorial is coming off to the side. And since there's only three bonds shown, it's a hydrogen. And so in this case, the methyl is above the hydrogen, so it is um, so it is up and the hydrogen is down. So for this one, we're going to look at the methyl groups, right? The one's pointing up, one's pointing down. So that makes this trans. Next step would be the Newman projection. And so I'm going to ask you, uh, I'm going to show you the molecule, um, and then I'm going to tell you between the, um, what bond I want you guys to look down. Um, so for here, I want C2, C3. So if this is carbon 1, 2, 3, right, we want to look down that bond there. Okay, so we need to start. So if it's if you're going to be doing the lowest energy state, right, this is going to be stagnant. And so it's going to look something like this. Um, and so remember with the um, with the Newman projections, right? So you can see. You can see the group in front. You can see the carbon in, um, in front. So this one would be C. So this one would be C two. But if I get this right, the uh, C three is going to be obscured from by C two. Okay. And so you can see the groups coming out front. You can see the. You can't see carbon three, but you can see the three groups popping out um, beside it. So you see this. So you can see this green one, and then the, in this case, the two hydrogens. Um, so in this case, C two, we're gonna have. I'm gonna say that's gonna be in the front. Okay. What what is hanging off of it? Well, it's right. So you've got. So you, you've got these two hydrogens, right? This is CH two, and then you've got this methyl group here. So I'm going to put the methyl group up here. It doesn't really matter where you put it. Um, and then the two hydrogens that are sticking out. Right? There's a hydrogen here, a hydrogen here. And that's the, the methyl group hanging off that carbon. For this carbon, right, we've got the carbon-carbon bond. Right? Um, and then we've got these three, the three hydrogens hanging off of it. And so we're going to put this, put this in a staggered configuration like this. Okay, so I forgot to mention that this would be carbon one, right, carbon two, and then carbon three would be behind, but we can't see it because it's obscured by carbon two, but it would have these blue hydrogens hanging off of it. Now, to be the lowest energy state, what you would want is you want large groups, so in this case, the largest group on the front and then the largest group in the back to be as far away as possible. Okay? And so here it's just hydrogen, so it's not really deal, but if you were, so let's say you had a methyl group here and a methyl group here, to get the lowest energy state, you'd need to rotate the back so that the methyl group is down here. 
if you if I was asking for the highest energy state, so the highest is going to be, right? It's going to be eclipsed. Okay, where they're right on top of each other. But for the highest energy state, you're going to want the, the largest group on the front and the largest group in the back sitting right on top of each other. Okay, so for degree of unsaturation, I'm going to give you this this formula on the um, on the equation sheet. The uh, um, so that I'm not going to give you the key, right? But this is right the number of carbons, two times the number of carbons plus two. So this is a constant. You got to have that in there plus the number of nitrogens, minus the number of halides, right? So this is the number of fluorines plus chlorines plus bromines plus iodines. All of those, minus the number of hydrogens. So in this case, right, so the DOU, degree of saturation, remember what we're, um, right, so this is going to be 2 times 8, yeah, plus 2, plus the number of nitrogen, so in this case, one, minus the number of halide, total halides, right, so in this case, it's we have one fluorine, minus the number of hydrogens, right, eight, all divided by two. Now, what atom didn't, didn't we have to deal with? Well, it would be this oxygen. Um, even, though it's in the, it's, even though it's in the formula, we don't have to put it in this equation because it doesn't really make so in this case, right, so this would be 16, 17, 18, 19. So it would be 19 minus 9 over 2. All right, so this would be what, 10 over 2, 5. So remember, this D of U is, is the number of, of pi bonds plus the number of rings. Okay, so that's what this means. So it may have five rings or two triple bonds and a double bond, or it may have, you know, three rings and two pi bonds. Who knows? Uh, it doesn't really matter, okay? But that's what this stands for, okay? That's, that's what this number means. Okay, so f to find the chiral center, there may be more than one, and there may be none in this thing. The first thing you're going to want to do is to, um, is to find the number of hydrogen, or draw in the hydrogen. Carbons. Okay, so here, right, there's one bond shown, right? So there's three hydrogens. Here there's two bonds shown, so two hydrogens. Here there's there's three bonds shown. It doesn't matter what kind of bonds, but you know, three bonds shown, so there's a hydrogen here. Here, right, again, two bonds, or two lines, so, um, two lines shown, so two hydrogens. Same here. For this carbon here, right, there's three lines shown, right, so there's a hydrogen. Here, right, there's only one bond shown, so that must mean three hydrogens. Same goes with this one. Now, if it has more than one hydrogen, it can't be a chiral center, right, because you need four different things hanging off of it. So we can get rid of, just automatically get rid of the these right off the bat. So we really only need to check this one and this one. All the rest of them we can just ignore. So remember with this, um, so with that, so we're going to look at H. We have a hydrogen, a fluorine, a CH2, and a CH2. And you say, well, that's the same. Well, if there's a tie, what you need to do is you need to then go one out and then check B. Right? So now we're going to check, well, then we're going to check this one versus this one. Okay, and here it's CH2 and this is CH3. And since they're different, right, that means this this group right is going to be different from that group. Okay, so that makes this one a chiral center. Okay, so one of the two things are going to happen. Either you're going to keep going out on the chain until you find a difference, or you're going to get to the end of the chain. Or if it's on a ring, same thing. You're either going to walk yourself around the ring until you either find a difference or you come back onto yourself. So, okay. Now for this one, right, we have the CH2, we have an H, but right, we have a CH3 and a CH3. Okay. Now this one we would normally say, well, it's a tie, let's walk out further, but we're at the end of the chain. Right? We can't go any further out. So that means this is not a chiral center. So that one right there, that's the only one we
So for this one, for, for determining R and S. So with that, so this is how I'm going to present it. Right? There's going to be a big arrow, say, here. I want that arrow center. Let me know what it is. So the first thing to do is just go ahead and draw in right, the uh, right, the four at, right, you know, make sure you know what the four atoms are that are directly attached to the chiral center. Right? So we have right, carbon, 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 hydrogen. Right? So we don't know. Right, it's all about weights. We don't know about the carbons, but we do know that the hydrogen is, is less than the you know weighs less than these guys. And so this has to be number. So since this is a tie, which says it's carbon, 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 right, we need to look at the bonds, right? So for this one, we need two carbon, carbon bonds, two carbon oxygen. For this one, we have two carbon, carbon bonds, right? So we have this is a carbon, carbon bond, and this one is right there. Since there's two bonds shown, there's also two hydrogens. So two CH bonds. Same thing with here, right? Two bonds are shown, so there must be two hydrogen. So for this one, it's two carbon carbon, two carbon hydrogen. Okay. So then you look at the heaviest bond. Right? So in this case, it's CO, CC, and CC. Okay. So for this one, right? So oxygen is heavier than carbon. So this is going to this group here is going to take the priority. So this needs to be number one. Then we say, okay, well they're both carbon carbon, but they both have two, so it's a tie. So what we need to do is go out one further. So now we need to go, you know, here versus here. Okay, again, there's two bonds shown, so there's a two CH bond. So for this one, we have one carbon-carbon bond, two CH bonds, and one CCl bond, right? One carbon-chlorine bond. For this one, we have two carbon-carbon, right? And since there's only two bonds shown, there must be two hydrogens. So two CH bonds. Now we're going to compare. Now we're going to compare carbon carbon versus the heaviest one here. In this case, it's carbon chlorine. Okay, so so this is going to take the priority. Now you say, wait a minute, hold on. This has two of them. Yeah, it doesn't matter. All the first rule is to is to look at the heaviest bond. Right? So, so um, that makes this one, this chain number two priority two, and this one priority three. And, and four is right here. So usually what I do is I'll go ahead and rewrite it. Um, so with just the numbers, let's get rid of the chicken scratch. Okay, so, so this is one. Um, right, this is two. This is four. This is three. Now, figuring out if it's an R and S, there's a lot of different ways that you can do this. Um, but that, so I teach primarily two methods of doing it. Um, the first one is the... Uh, is the hand method, which what you do is you point your thumb towards uh, wherever four is. So in this case, four is coming out at you. So it's sort of like, sort of like that. Right? So um, what you would do is you'd stick your thumb like this. Right? Four is pointing towards the camera. Right? So with that, so you like this, and then you rock your your finger your um, fingertips from one to two to three, like that. And since I'm using my left hand. It's going to be S. So the nice thing with the hand method is, right, you can turn your your thumb wherever it it, it is, right. So, so if the four is over here, right, you just turn your thumb like that. If it's over here, right, point like this. If it's up, point like that. So that. So the other way that I teach it is this is the classic steering wheel method. Okay. And so in this case, one, right. So this is going to be right red. And so if we want to do this blue green. This one we have to get four behind. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to rotate this around. So now it looks like this, so four is behind. So all right, so now the, the one is stays where it is, right? So as we go from here to here, here to there, right? The uh, the the green comes it was originally back here, it comes over to this side, so the two is over here, and then the three is over here. Right? With four behind, right, the steering wheel is, is like you're it's going counterclockwise, like you're trying to turn left, right? So again, it's gonna be S. Okay. If you look at this and say, hey, wait a minute, right? 
I thought this was going clockwise. Well, with the steering wheel method, you've got to get the four behind. For an anti-American excess, so this is one of those where um, all you're doing is, is the difference for this. And so the higher this an anti-American excess, the higher the purity of, this, of the sample that you have. Okay? And so this is, um, you'll typically see this, like if you're ordering a, a chiral compound in, in the catalog, you'll typically set percent EE. -E. The higher that number, the purer it is of the one that you're trying to buy. So in this one here, so let's say you're trying to find this, the, by the S enantiomer of your compound, well, it turns out that it's 98% um, S and 2% R. So the way that they would um, indicate that would be that difference, the percent EE, and that's just the difference between these two. So it's it's the higher number divided or minus the, the lower number. Okay, so so what they would put it in the uh, in the catalog would be percent EE, 96%. So the uh, so if you see that, that's what it means, is that it's 90, 98 to 2. So. Last one with the meso compounds. Okay, so, so I'm going to give you a molecule like this, and you, you have to add wedges and dashes where appropriate. And the, it's going pretty much where it's going to be the chiral centers. Um, and then you're going to have to make it so that it's meso. Okay? And so for here, the chiral centers are actually here, here for this one. Okay, and so what we're going to do is we're going to want to make that um, plane of symmetry right here. So we're going to put a dashed line. So in order to make them um, meso, what we're going to need to do is have it so that the mirror image of this is over here, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to have it put these either both on wedges and both, both on dashes, and that's going to end up um, having a nice plane of symmetry. So that's all. You could also do these with both dashes. Okay. Good luck.